Good afternoon and welcome to the 2024 Peligra South Australian Open. This is the last game of the tournament. This is the one for all the marbles. This is the men's gold medal game. For those that are just signing in and joining us, it is my pleasure to bring you the action from the beautiful beach of Glenelg. My name is Nathan Wombat McLeod and I'm joined by, I'm not going to give you the same intro as I did last game, everyone heard it there. It is uh, the local player that's been around and, uh, Way too the, long. Yeah, been around the beaches for about 25 yeah, years. Man. Chris McHugh, Hugh G, you're just giving me a predict prediction off off camera of what you think is going to happen this game. Would you like to be bold enough to say it in uh, in public? Yeah, look, I think that the uh, the team of both the teams are uh, it's going to be decided at the service box. I think both teams are preparing just to give their give their serves a real rip into the, the south southeasterly that we have happening at the moment from that right hand corner of the screen to uh, to left. It's uh, really got up in the last couple of minutes and uh, I know Paulie Burnett here is, uh, is a great jump server and uh, same with Benny Hood. So it'd be really interesting. The uh, the Queenslander growing up in some windy conditions in Queensland, uh, I know he knows how to play in the wind. So it, uh, it'd be really interesting that uh, Benny and, and D'Artagnan have been together for probably the last six months. Um, and we've got some great results, did really well at under 21 World Championships, um, but also won uh, Oceania. No, no, it was. I was wrong there. What was it? Pacific Games. Pacific Games. That's yeah. what. That's what I was looking for. And uh, Paul Burnett, obviously, my uh, playing partner, playing today with uh, Jack Pierce, stepping in for me. He's a uh, much younger, fitter, better looking, better looking. Um, I'm running out of adjectives here, but uh, look, they're they're a really high performance team. Uh, Jack and and Paul. They're very similar in uh, their stature, like long, skinny, but can jump through the roof. So it's uh, it's going to be an exciting game here to uh, to see who takes the the, the bickies for the uh, 2024 Polygra SA Open. And I think Jack and um, Jack and Paul obviously came together late last year while uh, you were nursing your body fractionally from being 45 or whatever you are, and um, came together at the Geelong National Tour and the, the Futures, the World Tour that we held in Geelong in November, and they actually came through and won that event, which which well, was huge for them. They won the Futures event in the uh, National Tour event. They actually lost to Ben and uh, D'Artagnan in the quarterfinals. Oh, there you go. So here's, uh, here's the early rematch yes. early in the season on the Beach Volleyball Tour, which uh, doesn't always happen. So um, it'll be great, a very interesting game here as we uh, welcome the referees, the great Pete Bowie, top ref. And Rebecca Fellstark is our second referee. Congratulations to them on their appointments. As we welcome the players out, D'Artagnan Potts and Benny Hood in the blue tops and Jack Pierce and Paul Burnett in the orange down the northern end of the beach in the green playing shorts. This is going to be a ding-dong battle here, uh, Wombat. Which, uh, you know what I'm really looking forward to? It's Jack Pierce and D'Artagnan Potts, two local SA boys, in their first gold medal ga game of their home South Australian Open. Who's going to kind of handle that? Because, and you would know and explain maybe a bit for the viewers that you do feel a lot of pressure being your home open. It's the one that you really want, isn't it? Oh, for sure. You grow up playing in the, the lower divisions, in the, the juniors, and you, you see on the... Oh, as Paulie Burnett starts the game with a massive block, not in my house. But you grow up watching this sport, you grow up around it, and you see, you know, for myself, the, the great players, Andrew Schott, Josh Slack, Matt, uh, Julian Prosser winning SA Opens, and, and it's something that you want to aspire to do later in life. So I'm sure that uh, both Jack and D'Artagnan are looking to, to win their first one, as uh, Daddy has a great comeback there after a really good, good serve there uh, from Jack. Be quite interesting just uh, seeing who Ben and Darty go after here early, put the pressure on. And Hugh, maybe I'll, I'll ask you because I was I spoke about it a bit in the men's bronze medal games uh, that 
James Tacken and Josh Howitt were, were wearing the same shorts that we see Paul and um, Jack wearing out there. Do you want to talk a little bit about the, the First Nations artwork and how that kind of came to existence in VA? Yeah, so as Paulie Burnett puts that sharp cross cut angle hit away, the, uh, the Indigenous artwork national team uniform came to be through the Sherry Arm program through the Australian Sports, uh, Australian Institute of Sport and Australian Sports Commission. Uh, we commissioned Brad Hall, uh, Olympic boxer from 2000, 2004 Olympics, to to come up with a, a design which is proudly hanging in the offices in uh, in Canberra. And and from that we we pulled elements of the design together to create our uh, national team inspired uniform so a world champs this year in mexico uh there is some matching tops that go with the shorts and um, it's really great that we're able to acknowledge uh and respect the uh traditional owners of the land that we're playing on uh and that we re represent as a national team all all australians yeah i, I think it's it was a fantastic initiative and, and i think coming up with a fantastic looking product as well and i know I, i've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to have a couple of, couple of conversations with Brad over the years as well, and I think we've uh, we're very fortunate in recruiting him to to do that piece as well, because I think we've recruited a very uh, passionate volley volleyball fan for for life in him. He, he always follows everything that's happening quite quite uh, religiously, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, as, as Daddy there just tidies up a little bit of an errant pass there from Benny, uh, well handled, like. Paul and Jack have really come out swinging hard from the from the baseline as predicted. These boys train together each and every day, so they know each other really well, and you'd expect it to be quite a tactical battle as well as just get up and, and thump the ball as hard as you can. Yeah, I think you're spot on. And so far, we've seen every medal game be done in two pretty convincing sets so far. I My gut would be that this is either going to go to three or if it does go in two it's going to be less convincing i think it's going to be a really really close game either way uh, i'd expect it to go to three sets to be honest uh, unless somebody really steps up like the last game steph just to dominate the game but i think it's really quite even game uh, either way That is a great set from Jack Pierce. That was a really high pass. Quite a definite, difficult set to make from what, five, six metres off the net and, and Paul Burnett just working that ball beautifully down the line. And especially in the moment with that, with those gusty kind of conditions with the wind, we, we know that that ball's not gonna behave the same time each, each time it goes up in the air either. So to have the confidence to kind of back your hands in and then deliver, Oh, that was a great dig by Ben Hood. Just starting not being able to control that back in play. Yeah, I think having that confidence to back your hands in on the beach is critical, especially the way that these boys want to play. They want to spread the offense. They want to use their height. I think maybe Ben and Daddy probably spread the offense a little bit faster than, than what Jack and, and Paul will, but uh, overall they're trying to achieve the same scenarios for, for both of them. As Benny Hood just sends that one a little bit along. Jack applying a lot of pressure with this blow serve. It's going quite flat over the net as the boys go 8-4 in the first set. You notice between the teams a, a little bit of a different demeanour on court. Uh, Jack and, and Paul are quite up and about, whereas Darty and, and Ben are, are probably a little bit more subdued in how they play. And that's just their personalities and, and everybody. I guess that's the beauty of beach volleyball, that uh, you work out what works for your team and for yourself to perform and, and not necessarily every every cut doesn't, there's not a cookie cutter model. No, exactly right. And I think we we love those athletes that that show the emotion and wear their heart on their sleeve. And, and I know Jack Pierce is certainly that model. Um, I, I remember watching him in that World Tour event in, in Geelong and, and he certainly uh, certainly was riding every single point of every match and I was exhausted just watching him. But it's that passion that we all love to watch. Oh, it's, I think it just shows how invested every, every one of these boys is in, in their journey as uh, beach volleyball athletes and, and how badly they want to succeed. Um, moving to Adelaide to be part of the national team, uh, you know, we've got, we got uh, Jack and 
Darty, who are uh, SA born and bred, but uh, Ben and, and Paul moving from Queensland and WA to Adelaide to train full time. But it's also a massive commitment from all the boys to, to train full time, dedicate five and a half days a week to training as well as then. I know a lot of them work for Olympic Party Hire, our, our sponsor for the event. So a uh, big thank you to them. Yeah, I think what's really special with that with that group at the moment, I think, is not just at the moment. For it's been for a long time now. Is the culture and dynamics inside that group is is really healthy. Everyone's mates. They're they're over here, and sometimes relocating, especially at a young age, to a, a high performance full time training program can be really isolating. And I think there's a there's a really good culture of of that mateship as part of the program, which is which is really cool to see. That's a great serve by Daniel Pods down the middle. The old hubby wife, man. I've had a few of them in my time, but uh, there'll be less positive culture immediately following that no uh, pass. Yes, uh, for sure. But I think you're you're right. As as long as you you step on court and you're ready to stick it to everybody, but. You walk off the court, go and shake hands, go, you know what, that was a really good game. We tested each other, tested ourselves and each other, then uh, we move on. Great little shot over the top of the block there from Paulie. He's not always hit, looking high, to hit it high, hard and deep off the top of the block. It's a little bit of light and shade there. I think that's probably something over the last probably 18 months or so we've we've really seen mature and develop from from Paul's game the ability to to take the the foot off the pedal a bit have a look around and think how can I be a bit smarter about this um, and I think that's probably come with uh, him getting a little bit more comfortable at the level he's at and it's turned him into a really smart player with really high volleyball IQ which is which is great yeah obviously he's uh as everybody well knows, he's a qualified dentist. It's been, uh, it gets said very often. Every every commentator in history has uh, brought that fact up. But uh, I think that opportunity to, to play some consistent World Tour beach volleyball and get more experience at that level and just, you can't really experience that stuff until you're in it. As uh, Darty just reaches over the net a little bit too far, touches the net. So that brings us to our technical timeout in the first at 12.9 for Burnett Pierce. You're going down the bad end here. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out this end. They uh, came out to an absolute belter of a start. And uh, Benny and Darty have just sort of wound that back a little bit in the last end or two. And I think both teams still, I think, a little bit settling into this match and finding their feet a bit. We've seen a couple of plays come together that both teams would be really happy with, but I think they'd probably be sitting down at the moment talking about, all right, cool, let's let's take that next step. Let's continue to, to build on what we've done and let's let's maybe get it into fourth and fifth gear to see what we can really, really do out here and, and put on a show for everyone watching. We are a couple of rows deep in spectators all around at the moment, which is which is very exciting. We've had all of the division two and three and under 15 three aside games all all wrap up. Uh, so everyone is watching this this final game for the tournament, the final gold medal game. As Paulie Burnett starts us off the back end of this second set. Interesting, they've uh, kind of changed their tactic a little bit here, going after Benny. Oh. A bit of a sneaky on two there from Benny Hood. Good yeah. dig to, to continuation dig to, for the rally from Jack Pierce. In a good spot. I think Benny just saw Paul take that little bit of a step across out of the corner of his eye and thought, oh, he's gone. I can just play that ball into the open space. I think that's the cardinal sin there. That's Coach Killer there, serving the ball in the middle of the net from down the good end. You really want to clear that net by a metre at least. and. Test everybody out down that end. It's quite hard to pass a uh, good jump serve in these conditions. That's right. And as soon as you're, uh, as soon as you put the ball over, you're at the very least forcing the other team to make a decision whether they're playing it or not. Put it into the net. It's the the biggest get out of jail free card in volleyball. Jack's actually applying a lot of pressure here with his jump float serve down the bad end. He's getting quite flat, and quite short. Uh, he's targeting that outside shoulder of Ben Hood. Getting a little bit of help from the tape there always helps as well. Oof, that is a big swing from Benny Hood. No respect at all for Paul Burnett's block. No, and I think even Paul landing just kind of <laughs> nodding going, mm, that was pretty good. Oof, 
Benny giving it a rip, just missing long. I'm sure he'll find his range pretty soon with that jump set. It's one of his weapons. It's, it's his go-to play. And I think sometimes people might not necessarily understand the amount of uh, service errors that exist, particularly in the men's game of volleyball. But when you've got a a weapon of a serve like like a Ben Hood jump serve, you're happy to take a two or three errors in the match if you're picking up four or five aces. It's certainly worth going after it. It's certainly just about playing the percentages and what uh, what are your strength of your team. Nice hit, Paul Bennett going very far inside out down the line on two there. That was a tight pass from, from Jack Pierce on a bit of a, an interesting serve there from D'Artagnan. I think he just threw a little bit too far in front of him and just kind of waffled it over the net, which in these conditions can actually be the hardest serve well, to pass I think ever. He, I think it turned out all right because it kind of floated up into a weird chest space for um, for Jack Pierce to pass. So I think he, he actually saved it quite well. As we switch at 16-10. 12 even. 16 12. Uh, 16 13. Just sailing a little bit long there, Jack Pierce. Sends Ben Hood back to the to the baseline with his fresh new haircut. He's gone with the the military crew cut after starting the ending the year last year with some quite luscious locks. I did, I did not recognise him when he first rocked up at this tournament, to be honest. It took me a while to be like, who is this really mean-looking guy? He's a competitor, that's for sure. I think that's just the essence of his being. And uh, he's certainly showing that today. Oh, Benny just trying to absolutely bury that peach of a set from D'Artagnan Pods. Just getting a little bit wrong and burying it in the top of the tape. I think it's a good time to call the time now that 18, 13 down, down the bad end. It's a skill to be able to, to know when to call a, a timeout. It's, it's just trying to break up the, the opposition's momentum within the game. Just take that deep breath, reset yourself so that you can come out and finish the, the second set, uh, the first set song. So. And at this point, they're, I mean, 18 13, you're five points down, you're moving into that, that really end point of the set. You, I'd imagine that both D'Artagnan Potts and Ben Hood are sitting down having the conversation of, look, let's not necessarily worry about what the score happens here. If we lose this set, we lose this set. But where we want to be positioned is that we've actually grabbed some momentum back and we've ended the set on our terms. So at the start of that next set, we actually take some momentum into the beginning of it. Sometimes it's really hard to come back and, and have a good start to that next set when you've just gone point for point and ended the set in quite a big margin. So I think they would be focusing on just getting one foot in front of the other and, and just wrestling that momentum back and the score will kind of take care of itself. And I guess that's the beauty of the uh, the old timeout. Paul Burnett just coming out and making a, an arrow first up, just opening the door slightly. There's a little slight crack there. If you can sneak a one or two points here from uh, Ben and Darty's point of view and go down the other end, I think you can really apply a lot more pressure. They've got three points until the end switch and they go down the good end. That's a set that's a long way off the net. There's another one. Drifted just very, probably two, two and a half metres off the net there. And uh, Jack just not quite able to get himself in a position to, to get that momentum through the ball to get to the deep corner. Oh, and that's how you do it. Very clinical from Burnett Pierce. And I guess that's the beauty of the on-two offence that Darty really didn't have an opportunity to get to the net by the time Paul was lighting it up into the deep angle. No, you could see D'Artagnan Potts getting to the, almost getting to the net and then kind of trying to re retreat, taking half a step back and just kind of throwing his hands up as Paul hit that going, what can I do? A little bit unlucky there for uh, Jack Pierce on the pool, just clipping the net as he's diving. It's one of those really, the most awkward thing in beach volleyball where you've already, you're in the air, you're diving for that ball and it just, Clips the top of the take and tr just changes the trajectory a little bit and it makes you end up looking a little bit silly. Especially when you've made the ground like you did there. It can be pretty infuriating. Oh, here we go. Hubby oh. wife. And that's that's, a, that's a really big point. 17-19. They needed that first point. Up the good end. This point and will put them right back up in the box seat. Yes, for sure. One of those. It's, a, it's a massive side out here to go 2017 up or... 
18, 19. Let's see what Benny Hood can come up with. Oh, and that's not not a great play there from Ben Hood. And he really needs to keep that in. Just make them play. Let's see what happens. Well, nothing to lose now for our boys in blue. I'm sure that's been said throughout my career a lot. <laughs> oh, as Paul Burnett just hands it straight back to him with a pretty poor service area into the middle of the net. Big side out here for the boys to take the first set here in the Peligra SA Open men's final. Oh, Titanium Potts, absolute weapon of a serve right there to, to bring it back to 2019. Well, I'd expect a time out here from the boys. And there it is, Paul Burnett. Can we please take a time out? Go back, take a deep breath. You've played with Paul. Yes. What's he saying to, he, he is taking the lead as the, as the senior athlete in this team. What's he saying to Jack Pierce right now? I think he's just trying to wash that last point off. He come up with a good serve, well done, all good. Uh, just making sure, just re reiterating the points that you want to, before the match you've spoken about, about how you want to run your offense, how you want to be as a player. Uh, but ultimately, I guess, in this dynamic, it's more just like, it's okay. We just got to slide out and, and that's the set done. You just got to trust yourself and trust your partner that you've done the work to, to you've already put yourself in the position that you're already up on set point. So now you just got to execute. And what do you think uh, Daddy and Ben are saying? Who are they going after with this serve? I think it's just coming up with a good serve. Put them under pressure. Hit the 50-50, just hit a zone. But most importantly, they, they have to make them play. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Can't give this up with a cheap service error here. I think I would not be surprised if they target Jack. And I think the play will be Jack putting on Paul for on two, I reckon. I think that's what Paul will be looking at. Cross block here. Oh, not with that pass. Ooh. Ooh. Pete Bowie might have swallowed the whistle on that one. That was a bit of a helicopter of a set, but it's a well timed play from the, the boys down on the northern end of the beach. Jack just tightening up a little bit, looking for that easy line shot. And uh, as I said, they know each other so well, these boys, that uh, for sure Benny knew that it was going there. And remember, the, the well, fact that the ball is spinning is not a sign of a double contact. Probably should have hit that on two there, uh, Jack. But Paulie just, as the older player of the team, taking control of that end of that point. It's definitely been a swing of momentum here in the match. The boys getting a little bit tight down the southern end of the beach. 21 at 20. So at this point, you must lead by two points. Paulie B looking for a, a big angle block here. Oh, oh it doesn't serve. even need it to. Jack Pierce coming up with a great float serve. Down the bat in the beach to send it. Then the first set, 22-20. And as predicted, been a very tight match so far. They made it harder than they needed to. They kind of got there with a bit of bit of room and then limped over that line in the end. Ah, but as long as you get there, Wombat, that's all that matters. And, and you have that luxury when you get yourself up. That's, that's exactly right. And a really, really impressive set from both both teams. I think uh, both are very, very comfortable kind of attacking and, and we saw a lot of defensive play as well, which is really cool. I think we we could probably expect to see a little bit more of that dynamic play. I, I would expect to see a little bit more going on two and things like that happening as, as the match progresses. I think it's just a testament to how well some of the boys are serving today. It's, uh, I'd probably just say that Ben and Daddy made a few too many errors, probably more errors than, than Paul and Jack have over the course of the, the set, and that was probably the difference in the end. Uh, just that bit more consistent application of pressure on the serve to the side-out game of the opposition is just grounded, as you saw in that, that set point, just really had the boys under the pump. And big shout out to all of our sponsors and partners that do enable us to deliver this, this amazing event year in, year out. Jack Pierce just looking for a call there on the set. 
I mean, I like it. It's, it's just everybody knows what's going on. You can pretty much do whatever you want, which is, I guess, as long as every, that's all you want from a referee, that it's consistent and everybody knows what's going on. I didn't think there was anything wrong with that, so, to be honest. Well, that's the difference between you and me, Wombat. Yeah, one of us knows the rules. Yeah, well, one just plays. As uh, the boys get out of the gate really quick here, hitting arrow there to, to Paulie B. Uh, two, two nil. Off dig. Oh, it's a tight set. Oh, he's done really, really well there, Benny Hood. Great single arm, staggy dig, stabby dig, fired it up by uh, just really trying to keep that ball in play, and I don't think Jack really read it too well. Uh, missed the, the little cut shot pokey. It's sort of Bo Soderbergh-esque, really. I think uh, Jack thought he was... The set wasn't quite as good as it was, and I think he thought that, that was just going to get kind of... Oh. Benny Hood has come to play in the second set, launching out to a 4-0 lead. I would suggest not pulling on uh, a peach of a set like that, as Benny was... His eyes absolutely lit up as he sent that ball to Salisbury. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, the thing that we know about Ben Hood is he doesn't necessarily be, need to be in the perfect spot in terms of approach and things like that. He's a really dynamic athlete that he can be coming in from an unusual position and twisting and turning and still put his body in a really good spot to attack that ball. Yeah, and he, he has a, a unique arm swing. And so that does allow him to get into some unusual positions that people aren't, uh, I guess, expecting and still light the ball up with a, a fair bit of speed. So I'm sure that is something that Jack Pearce and Paul Burnett will not be making that mistake again. I think the conversation in that would be in that uh, timeout right now would be, hey, let's stay up on him and let's not peel off that net unless the ball is well and truly off. Yeah, so as the boys come out, I'm sure they're just looking for a bit of a steady riverside out to, to take it back to 4-1 and then go back to the baseline. And for Darty and, and Hoodie, it's uh, getting out to an early lead, but they're consolidating it with a solid side out. Oh, there you go, Jack Pierce. Paul Burnett absolutely dishing up a peach of a set there. Like, that, that, that hit it itself. I'm sure you could even hit mm. that one on that. Mm. On a girl's net, I certainly could. Actually, I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> Maybe the old spikes on net, mate. As Bully B misses that by not very much. At 5-1, D'Artagnan. I'm sure he's going to target the 50-50 here. Good flat float serve. Oh, Paul Burnett just absolutely got sand monstered there. Usually hitting from the very top of the stick, but uh, I think he had that little bit of a cut shot there below the net. Yeah, he looked like he jumped, but his feet didn't leave the ground. Oh, we all have that feeling. One of the most dynamic players in the men's game at the moment, Paul Burnett. Closely followed by Jack Pierce. I mean, the boy can get up. What a hit from Benny Hood. Just a couple of metres off the net, back into the breeze. Paul Burnett not quite stopped on that pool to, to really control it properly. I think Paul Burnett would be not, not thrilled with himself from that. I think he almost was in a position to play that. I think he'd think, well, I should be able to do better than that. Oh, and Benny Hood finding the tape and the sideline on that one. I think that's just a ace every day of the week, really. Yeah, Paul's reasonably new to the blocking scene. Um, started late last year, so it's a craft that takes many years to develop. Uh, he's doing really, really well, and Paul, he just goes that one long. But something that uh, he's come along in leaps and bounds in. And all of a sudden, we're out to an 8 2 lead for Team Hood and Potts. And we've already seen Paul Burnett and Jack Pierce use their timeout, so they, you only get one per set in beach, so they uh, don't have any more as Ben Hood sends them out of prison for that. Sends it into the Derham at 24 7 gym signage out the back of the court. Benny doesn't mind the gym, by the way. Oh, all over that red you like 
a newspaper as Jack transitions behind sharp angle. Bringing it back to 8 4. Net dribbler. Sorry, not sorry, Ace. That did, that apology didn't even look half sincere. He put the hand out and then turned his head away before I can they guarantee no matter who the, the player is at this level, there is no sincerity in that. Sorry. It, don't it, don't it, even say the sorry. You don't care. You know I don't. Because I don't mean it in the slightest. Oh, good oh, touch. Good touch. Block. Oh. <laughs> That breeze really just picked up at the wrong time there. Good call from Beat Bowie. I'm seeing two fingers in the air. I guess it's one of the most controversial skills in beach volleyball. I would have loved for him to let that go, though. I. But they say that you go, the most. Uh, pretty zen player out there, Paul Burnett, would have absolutely lost his top. Well, they say that. One of the reasons that they let him more go is because when when you don't do as clean a set, your penalty is the fact that the ball doesn't end up in the same position. That certainly would have been the case there. That's only if you're a bad setter. As Paul Burnett, ah. absolute peach of a set and just sent a little bit wide from Jack Pierce. I think Jack was a little bit too high. To I, I think so. Like I think Jake, had, Jake, Jake. I think Jack had a pretty good look at that line and just maybe a little bit too long. Yeah, just shot it out. At 10 6. They've stemmed the bleeding a bit though. Now it's just about can they right the ship and get back in this set? It's inside. Oh, that's well, well done. Yeah, a tough scenario there for, from Jack. Missed it, long, missed it wide in the last one, just decided to take a little bit of speed off. Cut shot. Tell you what, the boys, one of the big differences so far in the match is the boys in, in our orange Peligra tops much more comfortable coming in using some kind of open hand little cut and roll shots where we're seeing a lot a lot more balls being banged out of position from from d'artagnan potts and ben hood yeah I've probably benny tried to cut the ball a couple of times early in the match and missed him so as a player you don't really go back to to something you've if you're not on. feeling it, you're not feeling it. Yeah. So I uh, probably just stay away from it and him banging the ball has worked so far so may as well stay on a good thing. That's a big hit from Darty. Ball is just drifting onto that outside shoulder and he's just going with it as Paul jumped into the angle. It's not a bad set for Paul. Oh, and as Jack just absolutely levitates and detonates on that ball. It's and hard. That's, it's a good, that's a, you said you said it, but it's a great set by Paul Burnett, kind of being able to throw the ball up on the net and go, look, you, your pass wasn't great. I've put you on. You've got to do something of winning this point now. And that's all you want from your partner. You just want to better the ball for each other. And no matter whether it's the, the pass, the, the set, or the hit, you just want to keep better in the ball for each other. And if you can do that consistently, more times better than not, you'll probably win the game. Beach volleyball is a very selfless sport in many ways. What that? It certainly is. As we have the uh, SA Open crew just fixing up some of the signage around the court as we welcome the players back on the court. 12 9 to the team in blue. Can't believe the shows for those the boys need you to bring the energy and get back to the action. Let's hear you go. Tough serve. Oh. Transition opportunity for the boys. Oh, that's great touch, but unable to finish it off. Way to come out strong from the uh, technical timeout. Jack Pierce, great serve start. He's really getting that ball quite flat on the float serve and requiring Benny to move his feet. I mean, we saw that. The, the ace to finish off the first set was just a, 
an absolute rocket that was just completely flat. Oh, oh. Paulie just reaching in on that angle. Uh, Benny, very right to left hitter. So he knew where he was going, he just couldn't quite reach over the net strong enough to penetrate and, and get that ball going down. Sometimes with blocking, it's the, it's not being, it's not the biggest, it's how well formed you can be as the, the hitter's hitting the ball. As they've given Paul Burnett the angle and he has absolutely accepted that hook, line and sinker and buried that ball into next week. As soon as either team has a good look at the court, there's not much stopping them. Oh, good oh, dig from great, Jack. Well great read. read. Hey, that's a great play from Jack Pierce. Stepping up here in the SA Open final. He knows it's on the the game's on the line right now. The, the momentum of the, the second set has shifted again. And stepping up from the baseline and and from the backcourt. That that was a really heads up play, seeing that that ball was gonna get past Paul down the line and just making the early move to be able to make that dig. Huge. Hit that long and wide, Benny Hood. Coming behind. Just probably uh, too much caught by running behind, just taking that little bit extra angle away from him. Missing it, 13 all. I'd expect a timeout here pretty soon. Oh, there you go. Just go again, Ben Hood. Just keep swinging away. You're not going to uh, stop him there. Big point here to go 14 all. I'm going to go 14 all to the to the good end serving and not 15 13 down receiving. Settle a debate for me here, Wombat. The biggest change in the beach volleyball game. What would it be? Just what ends? What? In the beach volleyball game. You have, yeah, have ends every seven points. Yeah. The third set every five points. At what score level is the biggest switch point? Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I think... I think depending on the end, I think the 18-17 change, somewhere around that, can be big. Can be. I think my standard answer for that is 13-11 uh, in the third. Side oh, yeah. out, you side out, you go 14 11, you're up match point, you drop it, you 13 12, and it gets a little bit interesting. As Benny Hood comes up with the third or fourth ace dribbler serve that we've had today. Didn't even bother to say apologise on that one, Benny. He's a stone cold killer. I think 16 18. That's a great swing down the line by Paulie Burnett. High, hard. But he was in the right spot. He started there early. Just couldn't quite get his big mitts on it. So we've seen Hood and Potts just ride the ship a little bit. We saw them get challenged after having an early lead. Just wrestling that momentum back now. Back in control. They got two point lead. They're down the bad end. They'd be quite happy with how, how that's worked out for them so far. Yeah, they, they definitely righted the ship a little bit after their little wobble there to change a 14 all. Certainly, uh, Ace always helps. And B, as does a big block there from D'Artagnan Potts, reaching him big on the angle, making it 18-15. And that was a really big point because now that means, regardless of what happens these next two points, when they change back and go up the good end, they're going to be with their noses at least in front. Oh, that's a great serve there. Jack Pierce going on too. Good pass there from Paulie Burnett. Well dealed. Dealt with. As you said, 18-16. That's Jack Pierce goes back to serve to, to rip one into the breeze that's really picked up. This is and this is where I think it's absolutely crucial. It's a good serve. Oh. Paul Burnett absolutely got Sam Monster on that block. He got a little bit caught ball watching rather than watching the player. Interesting choice of uh, shot as well from D'Artagnan there. Mm. I 
Paulie and Jack just asking him, was it uh, a bit of a tip or was it just a miss hit? But uh, Pete Bowie was having none of it. Pretty close and good angle for uh, Pete to have a good look at it as well. In his VSA bucket hat. They're looking mighty fine in their bucket hats, so it must have been. Very sun safe. It is very, very sun safe. Touched on the block, Paul Burnett, but just couldn't quite get a hand on it, Jack. Takes us to set point in the second set. Yeah, D'Artagnan pots back to serve, three set points in hand. Can he get it done on the first ask? Oh, he's tried to absolutely rip the cover off that serve. Buried it deep into the middle of the net. So now they've got to go back and side out for the set. I'm sure Jack will come up with a good serve here. It's an interesting reaction there. He's ripped the absolute hell out of the ball and then been quite furious with himself for erring. I think he has a very high hand. Oh, Paul Burnett diving in the angle. Good block, good cover. Oh, this is an interesting set. I think there might be some discussion after this point. There he goes. Jack Pierce makes a statement to Paulie as he hits it and puts it away. Pete Bowie just remonstrating a little bit with the athletes. As the timeout comes at 2019, we're in a very similar situation, exact same situation as the first set. I think that was set up. That was a pretty good play from the boys. Uh, serve, darted down the line, blocked the angle. Reverse scores, though. Reverse scores. Grant, thank you, Wombat, for correcting me there. That's all right. It wouldn't be the first time in my career that you've corrected me. No. I'm all about the technicalities. Well, that's why you're TD. We are looking forward to a massive some Australian summer of beach volleyball ahead of us. We, as you've mentioned, had one national tour event, but Molly Milk coming up, Cobram. We all love going back to Cobram, Absolutely. to the mighty Murray River. One of, one of the greatest locations we play beach volleyball at in this amazing country. And we all love to go to Sporties for a schnitzel every night as well. Look at you looking after the sponsors. I do love a schnitzel warm-up. As the boys come back on court, Jack Pierce serving in 19.20 down. Benny and Darty in the dark blue singlets just looking for one side out to take it to three. And we all know that the third set's a toss of the coin scenario. Cool. And he set that wide. That is a really good play from the boys. Put a lot of pressure on the serve. Interesting to switch it back to Benny after scoring the last point on Darty. Now, this is a very large point. It's right up there. Oh, Jack Pierce. Good serve. That's coming back down the line. He's in the right spot. Continuation dig. Oh, that's a great hit in transition from Ben Hood. Just taking the tops of Paulie Burnett's hands. Sending himself back to the baseline. 21 20. What is he going to do here, Wombat? I reckon he's going to try and put this on Jack's outside arm. Interesting, he's going from the left hand corner here. That's a pretty good set from Paul. putting an exclamation mark at the back end of that set. And they're going to take that second set, 22-20. So that's not a bad first couple of sets, is it? It's a, that's a great Jonathan Fogarty say, a ding-dong battle, my friend. And it has proved to be this way. It's a very tight game, 20, as tight as you can get, 21-19, 22-20. Going to the third set here. I think everybody has to uh, place their bets very early here because it will go to the distance. Who do you, th who do you like? Daddy and Benny are looking pretty good right now, but to be honest, I'll have to back my partner in here. I thought you would. I so I, I will say, I think, I think after the momentum of that, I think Daddy and Benny might get the job done. It's, uh, it's going to be a great third set to, to finish what an amazing competition here at the Pelligra. SA Open for 2024, and whoever wins will be a worthy winner of the SA Open title. Certainly will. And you mentioned before we've got some amazing beach volleyball coming up around the country for the rest of this summer. 
but tell us a bit about what the journey looks like between now and Paris, because we are in an Olympic year. What does that look like for Australia as we move into Paris 2024? Yeah, I think we're about 197 days away from Paris 2024 opening ceremony, which is very exciting. Beach volleyball will be the event of the Games, playing right out the front of the Eiffel Tower there in the park. Um, Tom and uh, Tom Hodges actually, but still in the race for the top 17 qualification uh, in the world. So they'll be heading off to Qatar early next this year uh, to continue with their common, uh, qualification. Oh, Jack, as Jack jumps the barrier to try and retrieve that errant pass from Paul Bennett. Uh, and same with Mark and Isaac. Uh, Paul and Jack will continue to play uh, until I'm back to being healthy. Uh, but I think we're probably looking more towards the continental path route, uh, which will be mid-June, somewhere in the Asia Oceania region. And hopefully Tom and Zach can, can qualify their own place outright so that then two men, Australian men's teams uh, can go to the Olympics the first time since 2004. And that Continental Cup is like a Davis Cup style event. So two teams uh, from each country around the Asian region battle it out across different stages to qualify one team for their country. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I think it then comes down to either selection or a playoff game, which would be really interesting. Very exciting. And with, with our women, obviously, Maria Fay and Taliqua Clancy in the box seat to qualify in their own right. Yeah, they're very. I think they're number six in the world at the moment I, on, I, on rankings. I'm not sure we can say it's it's a locked away thing, but I think I think it's as close to as it possibly could be. Yeah, you obviously have to get your 12 minimum 12 tournaments up to to qualify yourself for the Olympics, but they are in a very 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 good position to qualify themselves. As uh, some really tough serving from the southern northern end of the beach from D'Artagnan Potts brings the score to 3-1. Uh, they've really stepped up their serving in this first end. He, uh, Daddy very much reminds me of the great Pablo Herrera, four-time Olympian from Spain. Uh, the younger similar, version. Yeah, very, very much younger version. But the uh, same body type, plays very similar, same arm swing. He's had a really, really good career, uh, Olympic bronze medalist in uh, 2004. So if uh, Daddy can do something similar to that, that'd be phenomenal. As Paul Burnett rep returns the favour with a great jump serve. Oh, and puts it away on two, Jack Pierce, to bring it back to 3 all. I think this is going to be the way the, the third set goes. Whoever goes down the, uh, the good end and bombs a few good serves might... Uh, it's whoever can handle the, the bad end the best here. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I was going to say. Your serve receive from that bad end becomes absolutely crucial because every point you get down there is worth probably two or three in the scheme of things. Mm, I think Paulie might have just missed a trick there. I think he should have gone back and, and ripped another one. Not shelved it and went with the, the float serve. I think uh, right now it's about sucking it up no matter how, how you feel and, and bringing your best things each and every point. like he did just then. That is a hell of an angle from a metre and a half off the, yeah, off the net. Is. I don't think anybody in the world can stop that one. As Jack Pierce goes back to the left-hand corner to rip it back into this breeze. Good serve. Good, good pass. Oh, that is an interesting set. Like the hoodie just chiseling that block down the line. Bit of a subdued crowd, really, for the final here. It certainly is. There's not. There's not a huge amount of people being vocal. Oh, that's a really good block there from Dutton Potts, reaching back into the line, bringing up six four on the switch. And that's big. They go back to the, the good end, 6-4 up. Really, really big. I mean, not everybody's parents is prepared to come down with pots and pans, Wombat. <laughs> good pass. Yeah. 
a pretty good set from Jack, and Paulie's just sent it a little bit wide to, to bring the time out. I think Jack just was having a bit of two minds there about whether he brings the hands out or went with the bump set. Went with the bump set, and just a little bit out of rhythm there. I think Paulie was expecting maybe a slightly higher set, got a little bit cramped up. And I dare say that might be why Paulie's quickly called the time out, just to think, let's just take a breather and let's just settle. Yeah, he's definitely just got to settle in here and wear a couple of good serves. Just find a way to slide out. It's not about being the, the clinical right now. It's just about finding a way to win the point. I remember uh, a great Australian indoor player once said to me, it's not how, it's how many. It doesn't matter how you get them done, you just need to get them done at the end of the day. I feel like that was Nathan Roberts. I said great. No, it wasn't Nathan Roberts, you're right. One of the uh, all-time leading games for Australian He certainly Warriors. is. 333 caps or something like that for the country. I'm sure he's told you that all the time. Uh, great serving of volleyball in Australia, Nathan Roberts. As uh, D'Artagnan Potts ready to start us out of the timeout. And that is a really, really good set of a pretty tough pass uh, from Paul Burnett, letting Jack Pierce absolutely bury that ball cross court. It's a strong comeback out of the timeout. Well, oh, there's drawing the error, coming behind. I mean, that's a bit of a, a learning for to Dardy there. Yeah, the wind's blowing from the ocean back onto the corner. So being from that left side, you really want to swing back out towards the stick like he has been doing and, and whack it back into the breeze on the angle. Oh, Bowie is... Called that for a double, which I think it was, to be honest. Yeah, it, it wasn't definitely, the cleanest contact going around. No, it definitely came out of one hand than the other. To go seven all. This is a big point. Eight seven to go to the switch. It's a great swing from D'Artagnan back on the angle. To bring the switch at eight seven, and all respect to the referees, they have the hardest job on the beach. They make split second calls that. I guess we in the commentary box have the, the beauty of being outside it and uh, I guess that extra couple of seconds to judge. Where we also have a giant replay screen in front of us, which also, also helps. True, but uh, Pete Bowie is one of the best in the business, so... Uh, Despite what his bucket hat says. <laughs> oh, good pass from there. Oh, a bit of light and save from Paulie Burnett, just shooting the line. Great pass, as, as you said, Wombat. It's, one of, it's an area of his game that's really improved, it's passing. Seven points. Mm. He can always hit, that's for sure. And it's his, it's his grace under pressure, I think, at the moment as well, that, you know, back, I think back when he was a younger athlete, when he'd first, when you guys first teamed up, I think he still would have tried to bang that ball after yeah. like coming out of position, where now he can have that look around and see the open shot and think, well, I don't need to do that. Well, I when you jump a meter out of the set, mate, you got all the time in the world to make this Exactly thing, right. It's a luxury I don't have. Oh, he made the right move on the block there down the line, just not quite big enough. And Darty sensed that space, just jamming that ball down the line. It was a really good set for Ben there from a tough position. We're at nine all. So at this point, kind of getting towards the late period of that third set, there is absolutely nothing that separates these teams. That's the first service error long from this end. And that's covered 10-9. So big point here for, for Paulie Burnett. He's going to go back and rip a serve here. See if he can go 11-9 at the switch. Daddy going high, deep, down the middle. When in the fiddle, go deep middle, they say always say. And it's, uh, it's worked out pretty well for me that time. Yeah, it certainly has. 10-all as we change with Daddy and Ben 
down the good end. And we have all of a sudden seen that breeze become a, that little bit more consistent. It's been a little bit less gusty for probably the last 15, 20 minutes. Probably just the wrong choice there. The execution, not great, but uh, probably just the wrong choice there from Jack. I think he knew uh, he was not happy with himself there. Just me pointing out the obvious, mate. Oh, it's tight. Paul Burnett's got a bit of work to do here. That brings up 12-10 to Benny and Dardia. The change from the northern end of the beach here, just putting in a float serve, changing the rhythm of the game. It's kind of caught them out a little bit. They need a good steadier here, the boys. Right, they'll, they'll want to hammer Jack Pierce here. Felt like a, oh no, never mind. Oh, it's not a great set. That's a really tough position there, Paul Burnett. Probably hitting it from half court with the wind. Very hard to uh, get a winner out of that one. Is 13-10. I think the boys are just starting to breathe a little bit of sigh of relief here. Starting to blow out a little bit. Important point still, though. And here we are. Here we are, Wombat. Here we are. As I said, you slide out here and you're 14, match point up, 14, 11, you've got a bit of breathing face. 13, 12, you're... 13, 12 and heading to the good end. Oh, Jack Pierce, just maybe lacking a little bit of experience there. Needed to make the boys play. That's a uh, match point for SA Open 2024. Can the boys get it done first time only? D'Artagnan Potts back to serve for his first home SA Open championship. I've been serving that good punchy float serve. Ooh, and he sent that misses. wide. And that's sending Paul Burnett back to the baseline. What do you think? Does he go after it? It's probably not, probably not the guy you want serving at you. Jump serving at this point is uh, pretty deadly. Oh. oh, there we go. There's one. And uh, have the boys got a timeout here? Or have they taken it? I feel like they've got a timeout to take. I think they've got the timeout. I would be taking the timeout yeah. if I was in. Paul and Jack have definitely taken theirs. Oh, I'm going to ride it out here. See if Paulie can... Uh, they have backed themselves. Hit the baseline. They haven't taken timeouts as early as I would oh, have. That is, that's a good call. That is a good call. That was not a great set. From Pete Bowie. And as we said, Paul Burnett, probably not the guy you want serving at you at this point in time. To, to yeah, bring can, it back to 14 all. You can just see Ben Hood's body continuing to fall and him just having that ball a little bit longer in the hands, trying to steady it. Oh, a tough serve again. Backs his hands. As you can see, the ball coming out of both hands at the same time. So no fault there. As we said, though, we had the luxury of that slow replay. Oh, Paul, we've got another crack at it. There we go. Oh, this, this game is going down to the wire, as we predicted. Oh. Wombat. This is, this is what everyone came to see. I feel we've been robbed a little bit of mental games. This is what now. makes Beach Volleyball great. And That's I guess right. there's a player sitting on the sidelines. Even I, right now, I'm a little bit invested in this game. But uh, the stomach is certainly turning a little bit. You never know which way this is going to go. No, it is very difficult to pick a winner at this point. That's a hang and bang from D'Artagnan Potts. D'Artagnan Potts flying the court. No respect whatsoever for the angle defence, angle block, just lighting it up. And it'd be very interesting to see here if he does make them play or make them light them up. I think he'll back himself in to, to go after it. And he did bring an ace up. That's a great serve from Darty. To bring up his first SA Open Championship. Well done to the boys. It was a great final from everybody. Paul Burnett, Jack Pierce, well done with the silver medal.
D'Artagnan Potts and Ben Hood have got their name etched on the South Australian Open trophy after a very long battle, not only out here today, but then they had a three-set battle this morning in their semi-final, and then a long day yesterday out here battling their way through. And of course, Paul Burnett and Jack Pierce, we certainly haven't seen the last of them after a great SA Open campaign. We expect to see both of them back in various fashions over many, many years to come. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the future really looks bright for Australian men's beach volleyball. Uh, not only the players playing here, but Josh and uh, Tacken from earlier in the bronze medal game. But now I know there's, there's probably about 20 guys in the training environment now, which is the most men we've ever had at the National Training Centre. So I'm sure the, the quality and the standard of beach volleyball in Australia is just going to keep improving as the summer goes on, but also towards World Champs 2025 here in Adelaide and, you know, the big one, Brisbane 2032 Olympics. That's exactly right. And from us here, well, thank you very much for joining us from wherever you are around Australia and certainly the world. Just before we do sign off, just would like to thank all of our major partners uh, for allowing us to come and deliver this incredible event year in, year out. Special big thank you to our naming partner, Polygra, as well as City of Holdfast Bay, Jetty Road Traders, Macasa, Physio Extra, Valor, our uniform supplier, Dermot 24-7 Gym, Olympic Party Hire, Voltron Electrical, Big shout out to Danny Hellman, who has been a long time supporter of volleyball in this state and Lumen as well. And a big thank you to the team from Volleyball South Australia who have done such an amazing job. And of course, Nippies who are keeping all of our athletes hydrated across the weekend. So signing off for the final time here from the South Australian Open for 2024. Thank you very much for joining and we will see you next year.